And in this session, we're going to go through the uh, art of setting and achieving goals. My name is Matthew White, and we help to decode the science of uh, peak performance and help people to achieve the mighty goals in their lives. Right. And today in this session, we're going to cover something that's very important, a great topic that I like to talk about, and it's about setting goals and sticking to them. The failure rate for so many people on setting and achieving their goals is high, right? We go through uh, phases in our life where we aim for certain things. We want certain things in our lives. We, we set these ambitious goals to achieve these things, whether it's weight loss, relationships, money, financial, business goals, whatever it is, we're setting goals because this is our nature. As human beings, we have a system within inside of us to want to achieve better, to want to move forward, to want to uh, have more in our lives. <clears throat> we get, we're going to discuss this concept and go through how we're going to give some tools on how you can achieve your goals more effectively. And also we're going to dive into the neuroscience and some of the science behind uh, goal setting and achieving goals in your life. Now, it's important to note that uh, we go through a context of neuromastery. We're very uh, you know, detailed in this effect of understanding the science behind the mechanics of neuromastery. And neuromastery is about mastering the functions of your brain so that your biology can work for you instead of against you. So this is a very important context. And we deliver on a system that helps to achieve this. And we help many clients go through this uh, to find the ability to perform at their best every day. Now, this is a system that we work with. It's a very detailed and very powerful system to help people achieve their goals and be more effective, right? We're going to be talking about one of the components today, which is about drive, creating drive in your life, and that's goal setting and having the tools to be able to master your life and be in control of your life so that you can achieve more and be more effective. But by no means is it the beginning and end all of everything, right? Goal setting is only the beginning. It's only a piece of the puzzle to becoming a person that has peak performance, right? There's multiple levels to this, right? We, we have three main layers, right? We call it fuel, spark, and ignite. Down the bottom here, you, in order to perform at your best, you need things like drive, focus, grit, energy, resilience, fortitude, creativity, control, and mastery. These are the most important aspects of peak performance. If you don't have any of these or one of the pieces of this puzzle is missing, you can't perform and operate at your best. So we, we drive this as a very big initiative to help people perform better in their lives. Now, it's clear to say that a lot of people go around, uh, you know, unsure, lost, feeling, you know, not able to achieve their goals uh, sometimes people that set these goals and within weeks, they've broken this um, pathway to their goal within days sometimes, right? It's a, it happens to a lot of people. We aspire for so much, but we run around not really being clear about how to set goals, not being clear about how the goal mechanism works in our body, how to organize and structure goals, and also how to implement goals, what is necessary to move forward and make those goals happen, to be consistent, persistent every day to achieve those goals, right? A lot of people end up in a place of deflation or apathy, right? Or brain fog, where they just kind of go around in these cycles, trying to do things, but never actually aspiring, or never actually accomplishing things. Just ending up literally sometimes just staring at a computer with nothing happening, no eventuality of performance or movement forward. And so it becomes a cyclical uh, event where people just get stuck or stagnant or frustrated because they're not moving forward in their lives. And there's a big barrier in, in a lot of people's lives, right? And what a lot of people try and do, a lot of our clients, when they come to us, they, they're going through these frustrations, is that they're trying to do it by themselves. They're trying to work out this motion. And by doing it by themselves and not having a system, not having something in place to help them, they're just so frustrated, right? So we're very fortunate to help many people in the space of peak performance to be able to accomplish, feel their best and accomplish more and be more effective in this life. It's a very powerful tool, very powerful context. And we're able to, and we really love and passionate about helping more people in this space. All right. 
We have come with our own results. We've tried and tra tested and worked with clients and worked on ourselves to be able to be peak performers, right? To go from feeling, you know, back in the day when we first started out in this process, for me personally, it was, you know, feeling this whole um, feeling of frustration, lethargy, deflation, um, overwhelm, not being in control of my mind, not being in control of my uh, destiny, uh, and not having the tools and mechanisms to be able to accomplish goals specifically. And so once putting in a process in place, once I understood the mechanics behind this, was able to go and consistently create and produce. And now for the last seven years, being in peak performance shape. Now peak performance, this physical transformation is only a small piece of the part because the most of it is about the neurochemistry, the neurobiology of that peak performance and having a brain that's firing at its best and performing at its best because this is only a small piece of the pie and ultimately the funny story is is that i started this journey only with a context of improving my mind improving my mindset improving my neurobiology and what happened is my physical state has followed through and there's been a massive transformation as you can see over many 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 years being able to consistently keep that through this process and this mechanism right so we help people get into a place of clarity confidence and have perspective of their lives and accomplishing goals and being more effective, being more focused, being more motivated and having the confidence in their lives to be able to accomplish more. Now, if you like this video, if you like the training that I'm about to share with you, please like, subscribe, share this video so that it helps us share this word to other people and we can help more people accomplish more in their lives to understand the neurochemistry and neurobiology behind peak performance. Now, there's no doubt without saying that when you're talking about setting goals or goal setting and achieving goals, one of the big contexts we need to talk about is motivation. Motivation plays a big role in, in a, the ability for people to go and accomplish more in their lives, right? And motivation comes in several parts, right? And we'll have a look at this a motivational iceberg, and we've got intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is motivation that comes from the outside, from externally. It's something that pushes you or nudges you forward. For instance, a bus, money, um, you know, perks, status, praise. These are external motivators. And when you're driven by external motivators, it's not fulfilling and it doesn't really drive you to accomplish those big outset goals. Science has shown over and over again that people that are more intrinsically motivated or need that intrinsic motivation of somebody pushing them, they don't achieve as many goals in their lives. They, they actually fail at a lot of them going forward, right? What's a more powerful construct is intrinsic pro motivation. We understand this power of being able to drive and motivate ourselves, right? And when it comes to intrinsic motivation, a lot of people get lost and frustrated because they feel they don't have the ability to have intrinsic motivation or they don't know what intrinsic motivation is or where to draw from it. Intrinsic motivation is the things from doing things yourself, like having autonomy, being in control of your life, right? Being in charge of the decisions that you're making, having a good recovery process, having a, your mind firing at its best, being able to make good, confident, positive choices, um, you know, being able to know where you're going, being having the skills and, and confidence to move forward. These are all intrinsic motivators, right? And when you get those intrinsic motivators happening, you perform a lot better. You will achieve more goals. The one thing I want to say about intrinsic motivation is it's something that is not something that everybody's born with. Some people are naturally skilled at this kind of aptitude, but a lot of people aren't naturally born with this they have to develop it, right? This is something you can train. You can build a characteristic of intrinsic motivation in your life by doing certain practices, by training your brain to be able to uh, understand the value of goal and moving forward and doing certain goals. So intrinsic motivation is something that some people don't have a lot of, but you can exercise it. You can practice it. You can train it like going to the gym and exercising your muscles, right? Now, out of everything that we teach and we help people with is this understanding. It's a very powerful context because when you're training and practicing and exercising your brain to perform better, it comes down to this. Uh, we take in a lot of information all around us, visually, through um, our skin, through our auditory uh, perception. Uh, all, all these um, inputs come into our brain, right, from a wide array of, of fields. 
uh, through uh, media, social media, computers, work, bosses, clients, uh, colleagues, family, all this information comes into us, right? And we have to make decisions on that. And the decisions that we make are either good or bad, or they move us forward or move us backwards, right? And what makes for good decision making is the ability to what I call is control your impulses or have impulse control. Impulse control is that ability to make a decision to do or not to do something more effectively, right? There's a nice burger in front of you and a healthy meal in front of you. You have the ability to make a choice. You place value on those two choices. The control or the impulse control you have to choose between the one that's right and better for you is what we work on to help people because that impulse control is very powerful. And now it's a neurobiological circuitry that happens, and we're going to discuss that in a minute, but we have very flimsy focus. We have very flimsy control. Most of us are being hammered by a whole lot of information that is degrading that ability for us to have control over our impulses, to make better choices, healthier choices, stronger choices. And that degra degradation of that impulse control is creating a big deficit in this um, environment and a lot of people are struggling and suffering from it because they don't know how to practice and train this through um, the mobility of their neurobiology, right? So impulse control is critical component to this to have motivation. So you, you can be driven or motivated, but you need to still make good choices going forward. So we we help our clients understand that there's a big construct, right? And what's happening is that everything psychological, everything you you, you have inside of you, all those um, feelings and emotions come from a biological construct, right? You've been programmed your whole life to absorb a whole lot of information, right? Or sorry, you've been programmed by all the information you've been absorbing through your whole life, through these um, receptors, your eyes, which play a massive role in the, the programming or the construct of who you are, your ears, the things you hear, the mouth, your mouth, the things you taste, you, the things you eat, um, your nose, your audit, your your smelling system, right? Things you smell. You smell something bad, it programs you to think a certain way, right? Um, you've got your skin, things that you felt. If you've been, you know, abused or punched or someone slapped you, you have uh, programming that's happened to you, right? Physically, emotionally, right? The, the cold temperature, all these things through our skin, our muscles. How we act, how we react, plays a big role in the programming. Our gut, it's now shown in the science that our gut plays a massive role in the programming of our system. And finally, our lungs. Our lungs play a big role in this. So, so many people don't know, don't breathe properly, don't breathe effectively. And so their lungs are causing them a depletion in being effective. All of these rotate around the idea of building a narrative, right? Your narrative inside your head creates a storyline that you live by. And those are your values, your principles, and all the stuff that creates your uh, your being, right? So we've been programmed a whole life through these receptors, and it's created a, a neurobiological effect, and we live by those neurobiological effects, right? Very powerful drivers that make us move forward or not move forward or move forward in the wrong direction, uh, et cetera, right? So these are the phases of what happens in our neurochemistry or in our biology. And they, this is a simplistic view of how the mechanisms work. Don't want to go too deep into the neuroscience of this. But first of all, you've got perception. You're absorbing information. And absorption of information then goes through a signaling process through your nervous system. Your nervous system then processes it through chemistry. That chemistry then creates emotion. That emotion then helps to drive you, make decisions, uh, reactions, whatever happens in your body, right? So these are the four basic phases of, of action and reaction and moving forward. And this is in the context of goal setting, right? So emotion at the end there, you can see I've got a pin doll. <laughs> obviously paints a picture of how, uh, you know, the effect of emotion can have on us. It can drive us crazy and make us do some uh, silly things, right? So there is a circuitry of behavior that happens inside of your head, which drives goal setting, right? There's a specific circuit of goal setting, right? Animals, insects, and humans all have the same mechanism, type of mechanisms to have goal setting, right? Now, uh, creatures like bees are driven by goals. They have to go and get food. They have to survive. They have to provide, right? Uh, animals that hunt, animals that, you know, uh, all kinds of species are out there have a goal-driven 
circuitry or motivation to survive or move forward. Humans have an innate ability to be able to set and create goals, and we can have multiple goals, and we can have um, decisions on those multiple, multiple goals, and we have an extra layer of effectiveness on our goals. Now, this is a circuitry that works when we are creating or moving forward or doing or making decisions on our goals, right? There's a prefrontal cortex, right? That's the front of your head, which is making the thinking and the planning part of the process, right? And these, these circuits work together um, to create an outcome, right? Then there's the, pre, the, the order, orbital frontal cortex, right? The orbital frontal cortex is connected with emotion and creating emotion and deci emotion decision making, right? A very powerful system in this whole concept of uh, achieving and uh, working towards your goals. The next, uh, the next part of the process is the amygdala. Now, the amygdala plays a major role in this idea or context of fear and anxiety. And when fear and anxiety are part of the process, it can be a very, it's a very powerful driver as to whether you're moving forward or not in your goal setting. And then there's this big component, uh, which is a control mechanism, the basal ganglia, which is your go and no-go construct of your brain. And go and no-go construct is this ability to decide whether you're going to move forward on something or hold back on something, right? There's a, a lot of mechanisms that happen inside of this area, but it's to help you either to do a goal or to step back from a goal or to protect yourself or to take the risk and, and challenge something, right? So there's a lot happening inside these mechanisms, but these are circuits that work together in goal setting and goal behavior, right? The circuit of goal behavior. Now to layer over that, the mechanisms that work towards the actual driving force behind all of this is the neurochemistry of dopamine and serotonin and epinephrine. Right, the, the major two are, are dopamine and serotonin. Dopamine is this your neuromodulator that is focused or constructed on the extra extraceptive world of your perception. Right, so anything outside of your uh, perception, outside of you. Right, so dopamine is this uh, neuromodulator that works on dreams. It works on vision. It works on uh, pushing you forward, driving you forward, and helping you accomplish things in your life, right? It has negative construct as well. And dopamine needs can lead you down paths of destructive behavior. And dopamine can lead you down paths of very positive and interactive, engaging behavior, right? So it's a it's a neuromodulator that's very powerful and creates it can create good outcomes and it can create havoc in our lives, right? It's the neuromodulator of addiction. It's all the neuromodulator of drive, right? Motivation. And it can it needs to be controlled. So it's the outer layer of neurochemistry that really drives us as human beings wanting to do things. And it needs training. It needs control. It needs um, switches to make it do the right thing so that we are moving forward in a positive direction. Now, how that works is the control system of serotonin, which is part of the construct of managing the ability to have serotonin, uh, have dopamine working more effectively for you. So what serotonin does, serotonin is more that interceptive or internal mechanism of the here and now, right? So dopamine is an extraceptive or external um, perception. Serotonin, endorphins are more internally motivational, or internally interceptive. And in those construct, if you were thinking about the future, right? and visualizing and dreaming about what's happening in your life in the future, that's dopamine. To appreciate and be in the moment and be close, that's serotonin, right? And they work together. Now, serotonin and dopamine, sometimes dopamine releases, relaxes and lets serotonin take control. And sometimes serotonin has to be more forceful and bring dopamine down depending on what's actually happening in your system and how you create your narrative around all of this. So a little bit of uh, neuroscience around that. So just to understand dopamine, right? Dopamine is a crazy powerful neurochemistry that can drive us or hold us back. And we are, it used to be called the, um, the motive, uh, you know, the reward drug, the reward motivational drug, but it's been or neurochemical. But there's a lot of science has shown that it's not really the reward neuromodulator. It is 
it happens in a in a construct to help preserve us and to help move us forward right it's the molecule of motivation the molecule of movement right and so it has more construct than just connected to the reward system it has much more implications in our lives and has a massive implication on us being effective so when we get a spike in dopamine we also get a subtle drop in dopamine right when we experience something for the first time when we're going to say uh, a fun park and we go on an exciting ride right we go on that exciting ride dopamine shoots up and it's excited because we've done something exciting we're anticipating we're going on the ride we're standing in the queue we're getting this rush of dopamine boom and then we do the ride right it's exciting it's exhilarating then after that ride what happens is dopamine settles down now you go on that ride multiple times you'll never have that same exhilarating experience as the first time you went on it this is how a lot of our life works and operates because dopamine has that effect so in the opposite context of dopamine as it comes down you have experiences like serotonin so you come off the ride you experience this amazing feeling you're appreciating that amazing feeling that serotonin endorphins and these other neuromodulators that have taken over as dopamine subsides, right? Opposite of, uh, of that spike. But dopamine can have a diabolical effect because it can, over time, this is what happens. The, the more you do something, the less that spike goes, but the deeper that drop can go. And in some instances, like for instance with drugs, you can get addicted, right? It becomes a more craving. What's interesting about this context is that more craving drives us more than the, the movement towards doing that, right? So once you've experienced a high or experienced something awesome, you start wanting to do that thing more, right? The reason why um, extreme uh, sports people get, get connected or addicted to their, um, their sport because this effect is happening. They get this high dopamine rush, they drop down. They have this negative effect. They want to do that again and again. They're chasing that high. And it's a, it's a very powerful effect. And it can drive us. So a lot of people get more driven to do the thing again by the fact that dopamine, that this, the, our system is pushing them back up to go and achieve that high of dopamine again. But what happens is we never actually achieve that high again, right? This is a, a construct that happens in our daily lives as well. It happens with social media. It happens with uh, all kinds of stuff around us that we don't even realize. And those are the things that distract us and pull us away from our goals and achieving our goals and create the uh, narrative of, you know, um, justifying why we're not doing a certain thing. Now, there was just something to note and it'd be interest interesting to note about this slide is that when we look at dopamine, right, our, we are more driven by pushing away from pain than when we are driven to achieve a goal. Very important to note this, right? That we are more driven to be pushed away from the pain feeling, that pain feeling, that drop, than we are to be driven towards achieving the goal, to do that thing again. So we, the, our whole neurochemistry, our whole system, when we go into the state of craving, our body's not craving to do that thing, a body is craving to get away from the feeling of that that subtle pain that our biology has created to push us for, which is an interesting context when it comes to goal setting, right? So these this is the four um, modules of motivation, right? And when it comes to being motivated, these are the kind of aversions that we have, right? There's extrinsic and intrinsic motivation, right? Now, fear aversion... Uh, when you get somebody telling you to do something or else, right, or else you're going to get fired, you're quite motivated. You're pretty powerfully motivated to go and get that thing done because you don't want to lose your job. You have to provide for your family, right? It's a fear-driven motivation, but it's extrinsic. The next level is um, <clears throat> pleasure-seeking. You're less motivated for this type of pleasure-seeking, which is aiming for a reward, right? And aiming for a reward means, um, for instance, do this and you'll get this thing, right? It's an extrinsic motivator. And for the most part, people are less motivated towards those, those drivers than what they are 
for the, uh, the other construct, right? And when you have pleasure and you have intrinsic motivators that drive you down, right? You can come up with justification. That's where the problem happens, right? It's justification not to do the certain thing. I've got to go and exercise, all right? I probably don't need to do that today because it's cold. Or, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do better tomorrow, whatever. You come up with justifications when you, you have that intrinsic motivation, but you're not, you're not having a high goal effect, right? Which means you're not motivated enough. You're chasing that external, still um, pleasure-seeking uh, thing, right? You're trying to chase the high, but that high isn't the thing that's really driving you. What drives you a lot and drives a lot of people and most people is this construct of pain and fear. So you can use this to your positive effect. You can use this to help you drive forward so that you can be more effective in your life, right? And if you think of this idea or this notion that you're more you're more motivated, motivationally driven through fear or pain, understanding it in this construct, that if you build a narrative around the, the worst case of something happening and why you're pushing yourself away from that, right? You're pushing yourself away from this fear or pain. I, you could think of things like, if I don't do this, you know, my business will fail or my, I won't be able to provide for my family or I won't be able to do these negative things. And by actually creating a construct of things that you're pushing yourself away from drives a much more effective motivational drive towards creating the outcome of being motivated and achieving your goals more effectively, right? This is one tool that a lot of people fail to utilize because they probably don't understand that it's there or the effectiveness of it. A much more powerful driver for motivation and achieving goals is having the construct or having a narrative or a visualization or something there to push you away from the fear, to push you away from the thing that you don't want to happen in your life. It will drive you forward a lot quicker. A lot of people have this notion that they're facing or aiming towards a goal or this vision. They're writing down their big goals and that's what they keep driving for. And for the most part, that's okay, but it's not driving them hard enough, right? What will drive you a lot harder is having something that you that you fear, something that you're driving away from, right? You're going to run faster to save your life than you are going to run towards having an accomplishment or a goal. That's how our biology is structured, right? Next construct I want to talk about is emotional intelligence. Now, emotion drives a lot of our energy and our activity and our movement forward. And we need to be in control of that emotion to be able to accomplish more in our lives. Too few people in this world have not got the ability to power up their um, neurochemistry, right, in terms of emotional construct or emotional control, emotional intelligence. Having control of your emotion allows you to be more accurate and effective in your goal setting. Emotion plays a massive role in the negative and positive decisions that we make in our lives, right? And we talked about part of the circuitry in our brain that is controlling emotion that helps us to make these decisions, which connects with our planning and our, um, our uh, uh, executive function, right? So in order to be part, to be able to manage this part of our biology, we need to be able to learn what that is and how we can modulate that or tweak it so that our emotions are in more uh, succinct with us and we can be in control of those emotions. Emotion play a big role on how effective we are in life, right? And emotions play a big connection with that interceptive perspective of your life. In perspective or introspection, when you can understand or be connected with your introspective network or your introspective decision making, it can be more powerful. So many people live in a world extraceptively, in an outside world, dreaming, um, you know, ruminations and, and having all this daydreaming stuff happening out there, but they're not interceptively connected with themselves to get in control of those modulators that manage emotion, right? And that comes from understanding, connecting, and realizing your body's functioning and its ability to do something, right? Introspection is a very um, powerful construct. It's when you draw yourself in to understand 
who you are, what you are, and connecting with things like your emotions, your bodily function, your your movement, your your the strength of you. It's, it becomes a very powerful tool to use when you know how to use interception more effectively. Interception can drive massive amounts of effectiveness and power in your whole your whole uh, neurobiology, right? So when we talk about interception and we talk about emotion, when you're placing goals or you're having goals that you set, one of the big weighted processes that are happening in your neurochemistry is the value of your goals or the value of that thing that you're doing and understanding it's uh, the reason why you're, you're moving yourself forward. So the value placed on a goal will help you make a decision more effectively. You've got a burger in front of you, you've got a healthy meal in front of you. Instead of eating the unhealthy meal, you place the value on the healthy meal, right? And so how do you do that? It's understanding at a decision because at any moment in time when we have goals and we're doing things on a regular basis to move ourselves forward, we need to be in control of this um, impulse decision-making, right? The impulses that we have to make a decision to move forward, it becomes more effective when we start looking at these decisions that we're making right in the moment and placing real value on the things that make a difference or an impact in our lives, right? And placing the value on the, the opposite value on the things that are causing destruction in our lives. And that value comes from being interceptive, right? Being able to decision, make a decision and controlling your emotion so that you have better impulse control and you can make a decision more effectively to move in the right direction, right? So how does that happen? One of the biggest tools that we use to show our clients to be in control of their emotional construct, to be in control of that interceptive uh, environment is through breathing, right? Breathing is a powerful gateway or conduit to the autonomic nervous system, which is that signaling pathway that helps you to control these other mechanisms, right? And our autonomic nervous system is the nervous system, our main nervous system that drives a lot of our uh, reactiveness, right? Because we're taking in sensory perception through our eyes, skin, lungs, ears, nose, all these places, and then there's a signaling process that happens, right? Breathing gives you a direct connection to that autonomic nervous system and allows you to control it and be in, uh, be able to have more effectiveness over that system. So breathing in, breathing out, and we have a whole process of uh, how we teach our clients how to breathe effectively. There's different levels of breathing and there's different times that breathing will be good or not so good for you and how you breathe, right? Now, this might sound like a, a silly construct, like we breathe all the time, right? How can breathing make an impact? Well, it turns out that we don't breathe effectively, but it also turns out that we can utilize our lungs and oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrogen to create massive impacts inside of our system that we can control our neurobiology to make decisions and be more effective. It's very powerful. There's a lot of uh, science and data behind this construct of breath work and breathing, doing it the right way. When you do it the right way, you can empower your system and you can start feeling better about decision-making processes, right? Because you're controlling the, ner the nervous system, the network that's sending the signals to the rest of your body to make these positive or negative decisions, stop or go, right? So in order to, so these are two very powerful tools we've talked about so far, right? Having something that pushes you away, or right? that's something you can push yourself away from. And the next is being in control of your autonomic nervous system or something you can control and doing breath work. You can take charge of that system and be able to modulate your neurochemistry, right? It's a very powerful tool to use when done effectively. The science behind it is powerful. Now, the next thing is actually setting goals, right? Where do we go with our goals? It's really about working uh, smarter and not fast, and, and so you can go faster. We all, <clears throat> you know, in, in a lot of people's lives, we run around doing so many crazy things. We're, we're not being effective. We're just chasing our tail a lot of the times, and we end up going in these circles uh, like a hamster wheel stuck on a you know, hamster wheel, and we don't, sorry, a hamster stuck on a hamster wheel, and we don't help ourselves 
move forward because we don't understand, we don't have tools, we don't have systems, we don't have processes that can really drive us. There's a lot of information out there, but it's not effective. It's not giving us a big picture or the full picture, right? A holistic look at how we can be more powerful and effective in this world. Now, when it comes to goal setting, there is so many different types of ideas and constructs and you know, acronyms and psychology around this. We're learning a little bit about biology today. And there is so many different things you can do. What we found when we break down all the different ideas and the construct, it really comes down to some basic principles, right? There's not a lot to setting goals. The power of goal setting is actually doing the things to achieve the goals. And when you understand your neurochemistry, when you understand your biology, you're much more effective and more powerful at doing these things, right? So, yeah, we got a plan of a goal setting strategy that we have. Now, goal setting is a primary function because you need the psychological, you need to organize stuff for your prefrontal cortex, right? You need to help make it more easy to work through so that you can do all these other things and achieve your goals, right? This is a this is a mapping system, right? This is not too much to do with your inner biology as much as what it's got to do with the narrative or the construct of creating a process inside your mind. Now, when it comes to creating mighty goals, you need to have uh, some things in place, right? You need to know what that goal is you want to achieve. You want to lose weight, you want to earn more money, you want to grow your business, you want to be more effective, you want to be faster in sports, you want to be stronger in sports, whatever it is, it's got a, an end result, right? Now, based on what we know about neuroscience, the bigger your goal is, the less likely you are going to, to achieve it. So it's what this, the trick is, what science is showing us, is that we need to set goals that are reachable, Right, realistic and achievable, but they also need to be broken down into steps. A lot of people don't know how many steps they're going to have to create a certain goal. Right? And a lot of people set these high, big achieving goals, and they never achieve them because they, they're just too out of, out of reach. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't reach big goals that are out of reach. It just means that you need to first work on a, an achievable goal. Once you've got that, you can get another achievable goal. Now, achievable goal means it needs to be out of reach. It needs to be about what science is showing between 5 and 15% out of reach. What that means to you is going to be different to what that means to me, but it needs to be a little bit out of reach. It needs to be something that you have to work for and it's going to be a challenge, right? You can't set a goal that's easily achievable. Because if it's easily achievable, it's going to wear you thin. You're just going to lose interest and be unmotivated. If it's a challenge, if it's something that you can achieve for, like for instance, if you're currently right now earning uh, $50,000 a year in income, your next level up, I want to achieve eighty or 90000 or uh, you know 95000 whatever that is. That's my next goal up financially. If I want to lose weight, my next goal up is I want to get rid of this uh, body fat. I want to. I want to go that next level up. That's choosing. Say, I want to lose ten kilos, right, or fifteen kilos, and you ch you're challenging yourself, and that challenge creates a neurochemical reaction that helps to drive you forward, which is exciting, right? If you know how to just tweak that challenge just right for yourself, it becomes more motivational. It becomes something you can achieve, and you work towards it. Now, what we like to show our clients is that every big goal should have nine steps. Now, why nine? Nine is achievable. Nine breaks it down into nice, easy to consume pieces. Nine works out to be a really awesome number to work with. And now it's creating structure in your design, in your, your prefrontal cortex to start planning and managing things, right? So you create these steps to get you to that big goal. And these steps will go 5 to 15% challenging you all the way to the top and once you're ticking off these goal achievements you then become much more empowered your dopamine starts working with you you become more effective and you get more things done it's a very powerful tool and it works really well go ahead and try this for yourself if you've got to get to a goal create nine steps to get to there what is it going to take and then start challenging yourself to get those steps done and when you do them reward yourself for them and feel good about 
achieving those those goals in your life, right? This is a very powerful tool to use to create a goal setting structure and to create a reason for movement forward, right? Now, at the bottom here, what we like to say uh, is what is in your way right now. But I like to say for each of these, you need to put in place a very big pain point that you're pushing yourself from, right? If you don't do this, what's the worst thing that's going to happen, right? Um, you know, and that construct that you don't want to be, like for me, to put it, give you an example, what drives me is I we used to work in a job. That job I didn't want to work in, and I never want to go back to doing that work ever again. And I use that pain to drive me, say that I'm never going to go back to that. And if if I don't do this, then I might end up going back there. So I need to better get stuck into what I'm doing so that it moves me forward. Thinking about my weight loss journey, right? Thinking how, how overweight I was, how lethargic I felt, how deflated and motivated I felt. I do not want to go back there. That motivates the hell out of me because I feel amazing right now. I feel in the best shape in my life. I'm performing at my best, and that's a good place I want to stay and keep going all the way through to my old age, right? Live as long as I can possibly live. Now, a lot of people have problem with setting and achieving goals and sticking with them, right? And there's a reason why it happens, right? Neurobiologically, we are driven by these neurochemicals that De de depict us making movements forward or moving backwards, right? And a lot of times people rely on this thing called willpower. And willpower does not motivate you or get you happening, get you doing things until you have worked that willpower so much that it can't do anything other than just drive you forward. Willpower is the most unreliable source of motivation, right? Willpower will suck you dry. And if you really want to achieve great things, you'll notice what um, experts do and what big achievers do is they put these these things in place, right? Now, the next layer up is uh, habits. Habits are good once you, again, practice them and practice them and practice them. Because you need willpower and habits that are down at the bottom of the scale, right? You don't have good habits until you, you really have good habits. And good habits are never supported by willpower good habits are supported by the next level up your identity we start talking about narrative right and narrative can drive a major part of your life and you need to train that narrative that narrative drives a lot of your neurochemistry and practice and training your narrative who you are who you believe you are your identity your values your principles these things are the things that are empowering you to get movement forward in your goal setting uh, and accomplishing more in your life but Identity and affirmations and that are still a very lower level construct of motivation, right? We still need another layer. And that next layer is process. We need to create the correct processes in our lives so that we know what's coming next, what we need to do next, like a checklist or a checkbox of things that have to be consistently done, right? And you follow those concepts and you repeat them over and over and over again. We have a very repeatable process in our life that happens on a very uh, regular basis, and so we know what needs to be done, and we can't skip the, the the next checkbox. It's very powerful to driving you forward. The next level up, and this is one of the most powerful levels you can have for creating motivation and goal setting, and that's engineering and using engineering in this process, right? And there's mul this is a big layer of context that I'm talking about, but engineering plays a major role in being able to get human beings to move forward, right? Engineering helps us get to work faster in a car, right? So, or get us moving around quicker, right? Engineering, we get in a car, we can drive faster, better than being on a horse or even yet walking, right? So we've engineered processes in our lives to do and be more effective. Traffic lights, right? Traffic lights are a very powerful engineering construct that are simple, but they have a, a meaning, a powerful meaning. Stop go, stop, go, right? We have engineered this process in our life, engineered this construct in our life through the processes that we have in our world, right? Now, processes are the, the, the fundamental part of it, but engineering drives processes, can drive your identity, can drive your habits, and drive your willpower. If you use engineering uh, to drive you, you're going to accomplish much more in your life than you could ever imagine, all right? 
some of the more powerful engineering tools that we use, right, is thinking about how you run your life, right, how you do things in your life right now. If you want to accomplish something like doing exercise, right, and you often get caught up pressing that snooze alarm and you need to do exercise in the morning, right, we tell our clients, go put your phone on a far, far reaching place away from your room, somewhere outside your room maybe, and let it be set on loud noise. And when that goes off, you have no choice but to get up to go and turn that uh, alarm off and you've engineered a process in your life, right? That engineering makes action happen, right? Because you won't sit there listening to the alarm. It'll annoy you. You'll get up and you'll go and take action. Once you're up, it's a lot easier to get going, right? That's just one of the ideas that we utilize, right? There's many, many ideas to engineering your life. Accountability is a very powerful construct of engineering. Getting somebody to help you and work with you and help you drive forward in your life is probably one of the most effective things that you can engineer in your life, right? It's one of the most powerful tools that you can use to kick off your dopamine, to kick up your whole neurochemical system, to be in the moment and to appreciate what you're doing. Any goal, any goal that you need to accomplish in life needs these three pieces of a puzzle, right? Whether it's weight loss, whether it's love, whether it's accomplishing goals, business, money, finance, whatever it is. First of all, you need to be committed. You need to want to make the change. If you don't want to make a change, there's no point, right? You won't ever do anything. So you need to want to make a change. The next level up is you need clarity. How are you going to make that change? It's very important because most people don't know how to make a change. They just say, I want to make a change, and then boom, they hit a barrier. It's important to have systems or processes in place to help drive you through the clarity, to give you an idea of what you need to do next so that your brain's not trying to figure things out. You're trying to draw all the stuff from YouTube and the social media and all this stuff. There are systems out there that are created to give you clarity and give you the ability to move forward quicker. Why not tap into them? That's a very powerful construct of engineering. Buy somebody else's system. Get involved with a system that drives you forward. Right, the next level up is confidence. You need confidence. There's no point having a system that works really well if you haven't got confidence. And confidence comes from support, people around you, supporting you, having the right people around you, having partners that you can work with that help drive you, right? Having coaching, mentorship, uh, people around you that can help you, drive you, and hold you accountable. That gives you incredible confidence to do things over and over and over again to achieve the goals that you're aiming to achieve, right? And confidence is one of the easiest things you can do these days to plug into your life. Now, have an accountability partner or have somebody accountable for you, helping you get those things done that you need to get done in your life, right? So let's say them again. Commitment, clarity, and confidence are the three key elements to kicking your neurochemistry into place and helping you to achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve in your life. All right. One of the biggest things we like to talk to people about is the, this idea of slowing down, right? Because we're all running at a rapid pace, getting all crazy, going all nuts, chasing our tail, trying to do as many things as we can possibly do, trying to be productive. By the way, I hate the word productivity. I prefer the word effectiveness. Effectiveness is, is something that we should be aspiring towards. And we could never be effective if we're running around with our heads up in the air, chasing our tails, or just being crazy, right? Power comes from slowing down. Power in your life comes from being in the moment. Taking yourself from that extraceptive environment and placing yourself in an interceptive environment for periods of time where you can be in control and manage and train and practice your biology to be more effective for you. The art of slowing down so that you can be more effective is an art that very few people understand or know. And this is what we teach our clients, the understanding of being in control of your mind, being in control of your inner biology, and being way more effective so that you can kick ass in this world, right? And to achieve your goals, you can't look at this as a simple one-piece system, right? You have to look at this as a holistic system. And a holistic system means you have to have parts of the, your life in control that you can look at this in a whole big piece, right? You need, you need a body system, a, 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 a system that controls your biology. You need a mind system. 
need a system that helps you manage and master your mindset, your mind interactions, your impulse control, the ability to be in charge of the decisions that you make and be more confident, right? And you need a life system, a life system around you that manages, that, that you can engineer components in your life so that you can be more effective, so that you don't fail in your goal setting, so that you don't make excuses and decisions that aren't being helping you move forward in a positive direction, right? So you need a mindset system, a body system, and a life system, right? That will help you achieve your goals. So many people look at this whole uh, mindset game, personal development space, um, and it's just a mess, right? They're looking at small little pieces of the puzzle, right? And things that don't work, like affirmations, visualizations, and this whole idea about, um, you know, uh, multitasking. How does that work, right? There's so many myths and problems out there, but it really all comes down to understanding our, our science, our biology, how it works and how it wants to work. And there are simple constructs to this and making it happen. So if you ever, if you really want to achieve your goals, you need to look at your life holistically. You cannot look at one piece of the puzzle. You can't look at just, say, for instance, what's happening in your gut, what's happening in the way you're thinking. You got to put the pieces of the puzzle together, and that's what we've designed to help our clients. Right? There's a system towards mastery, and average is for people that want to be stuck in this area of doubt, fear of failure, overwhelm, distraction, and all these things that are de very debilitating and causing them for, um, pain. To getting to a point of being extraordinary, where they're more focused, more motivated more confident in life about what they're doing. And this is a scientific neurobiological process. We call it neuromastery that we put into context to help people be more effective in life. So if you want to hear more, please come and join us, right? Come and join us. It's literally like this. Are you going to stay stuck in this world that you're feeling deflated, you know, overwhelmed, full of doubt, full of frustration? Or do you want to open up your mind to the possibilities of what science is showing us these days and be more effective, be a challenger of this world and become the person you're supposed to be and be more effective, right? Thank you so much. Like I said, if you would like to share this, uh, like it, I'd really appreciate that. It'll help us share this content around. So we're really passionate about helping people in this world to open up their eyes to their potential, their full potential that they're actually capable of doing and not listening to all the, the rubbish that's out there and sticking to a straight line of neuro, neuroscience to accomplish more in their lives, right? My name is Matthew White. Thank you so much for being part of this and joining me today. I hope this has been of help. If you want to know more, you can just message us in the threads you know, send us an, a, me, a message. There will be a link somewhere in, in around this video that you can click to learn more about what we're doing and how we're helping people uh, in this peak performance space, you know, to have neuromastery. Come and catch up with me. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Have a lovely day.